Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm gonna to show you how to do a Dire Maul tribute run. This is a great gold per hour. It's arguably better than Hunter's gold per hour that they can do soloing it um, currently. Uh, a lot of mechanics in Dire Maul have changed from what players have experienced on private servers. Uh, that is very interesting, obviously. It does change up how gold per hour is to be made. Um, and you know, it does throw a bit of a wrench into the gold farming situation. I do think this is a good thing. Um, the gold farms aren't as lucrative as people thought they would be, so I don't think it's going to be or have as big of an impact on the economy, uh, which at the end of the day is great because it opens up more farms uh, for players who want, you know, a different taste of, you know, out in the world farming and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do a video covering all the changes to Dire Mall. Uh, in a separate video but today we're just going to talk about tribute runs and especially stealth tribute runs with a rogue or a druid uh, first off the run to the boss is one of the difficult parts um, the boss itself is challenging but it's a very small portion of your run there so there's a lot of stuff along the way that you need to watch out for and you will die to very easily um, I don't remember what I, I believe I believe it was Burning Crusade because I remember the the wolves in Ramparts uh, had stealth detection, um, but in one of the phases I can't remember or not phases but one of the expansions it changes so that when s mobs have stealth detection there is a little uh, skull like a little icon over their head so it warns you, um, but in classic it doesn't have this so you don't actually know. Uh, the mobs that have stealth detection or not, but I'm going to just tell you all the hyenas in Dire Maul Tribute have stealth detection. So if you get close enough to them, um, they will aggro to you. So it's just like if you're unstealth, they don't care that you're stealth. So you need to be very careful, especially on these different uh, uh, pillars here. Like here, you have to go all the way over to that pillar and you need to actually jump up on it because you can see he's 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 seeing me sort of, but he hasn't aggroed yet. It's, it's very, very hard um, with the hyenas, but as long as you follow this, uh, this guide, then it's gonna be okay. Um, so then obviously, make sure you have your rogue pick up the, the Gordok um, courtyard key and also have him open the door. Uh, the rogue has more cooldowns to get back into stealth, obviously, he has vanish. So if he gets attacked, it's not as big of a deal. Whereas if you are the one who's getting attacked, um, it's basically a run back to your body. So always have the rogue pick up the key. Um, a tip here, you don't need to go quite this far out. This was our first run, so we didn't know. But as long as you stay um, far away from these guys, they won't aggro. They don't aggro, aggro very carefully. These eyes, you have to kill them. You have to kill them right away, and there's two of them. There's one in this passageway here. Um, I suggest killing it between these two packs. If you don't see it right away, just wait for it to come to you. Because if it is close to these ogres, then everything aggro's on you, and it's a wipe. And as I've said, the run back and the run to the boss is the majority of the time spent on these runs, so you don't want to have to do it over and over again. So now we need to move past these insects. The great thing about the insects is if you do accidentally aggro them, it's not a huge deal. They're fairly easy to kill. And when you're running back out of the dungeon, um, after you've gotten the, the tribute or you've killed the, the king and you're now the king of the ogres, um, you do not get attacked by all the other ogres, but the bugs will still stay hostile. So you will have to kill them on the way out or you'll have to stealth past them. One of the one of the two. So if they do aggro to you, it's not a huge deal. This guy just sneaked behind. The rogue here went in front of him. Uh, this, this was just our first run, so we had no idea. But if you just stay behind that ogre there, uh, he won't aggro to you at all. That eye goes up and down that platform, and he has a pretty long pathing range. My suggestion is kill him midway up the platform if you can, uh, because you can get unlucky with the guard down below pathing, and he could path right into you. So kill him right around right here is perfect if you kill that eye there, um, and then you won't have any issues aggroing things. Um, again here, this you just sneak between these two packs. You do need a rogue to distract certain um, mobs as it can be a little bit sketchy. So him distracting hyenas is very helpful, and then also distracting here, so just to get them to turn um, in one direction so you can kind of sneak by. Um, 
those things are important. You can get to this point as a druid without any distracts. Uh, it's just a little bit more tricky. So then here, this again, like I said, is our first run. So we were just kind of trying to make sure we did everything carefully. I don't show all the wipes. Uh, we did wipe several times, kind of figuring out you know pathing of stuff and and just how the dungeon was in general then our first strategy on the boss was was the wrong way and so we ended up uh, dying anyways and not finishing him and then you'll see there's some something kind of funny happens when we when we kill him this time but uh yeah this one this is the spot where you really need the rogue he's going to sap blind open the door after he's opened the door, he will vanish, and then these two guards will reset. Uh, that is obviously an important reason why you have the rogue, as well as just uh, uh, being able to uh, vanish is really, really important. Again, you can do it with two druids. Uh, that portion there, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to mind control. You're going to have to have engineering on one of your druids. You mind control one of them and then attack the other. And then once the mind control cap has worn off, you can just finish killing them there. You just have to be really careful about the adds across the way from those two guards at that door because they can uh, very easily aggro as we found out. The aggro radius on a lot of these um, packs within this dungeon is is pretty high so even when i was doing a normal tribute run with a group of five people we did die a few times because of uh people not being used to how how uh close these these mobs will will aggro to you so on this spot we tend or we went to the right this time however you can go to the left as well you go around that fire pit where the org the ogres are standing and then uh it's basically the same thing it's it's actually probably a little bit easier going to the left but again, you just have to take a very, very, very wide, um, you know, pathing around these hyenas because they will aggro to you very easily. And there is a group of three wandering hyenas that, you know, path around this area. And they'll even path all the way up to uh, the platform where the ogre king is. So you just need to watch out for those three hyenas and we had them marked up with like a an x here but if you do pull them not a huge deal just make sure if you pull them pull them without pulling any of the other packs of hyenas and the three of them will be uh you know doable but they do hit very hard so just be careful of that um so here we were this was our our first attempt and I don't, i'm not actually going to show this attempt we do wipe here um, we were trying out a different strategy than the one we ended up finally going with. I was standing on the lower platform. So here, this is our second attempt. Uh, you go up on the highest platform for myself, the healer, and then all you're going to do is have your rogue just pop everything and quickly burn this boss down. Now, the second ogre, his little uh, summoner guy, is going to be... Uh, and you can see I got knocked back there and it was very close to I had to NS. But that guy will be on your rogue at the beginning. But then as soon as you start healing the rogue, he's going to path to you. Uh, and this is fine. You can just uh, handle that by standing up here on the platform. And he's going to run all the way around to you and you'll have plenty of time to kill. Uh, we've tr I tried this with a dagger rogue. It just is, there's not enough, uh, there's not enough damage. Um, one tip I'm going to give you right here, guys, is he does a knockback. So where my rogue is right now is far too close to the hyenas, and you're going to see exactly why in a minute. So have him tank the boss much further um, up the ramp because you will avoid exactly what happens here in a second. It's it's some intense healing, guys. You're going to be popping uh, possibly a mana potion, definitely your innervate, and you've just got to pump heals and put out as much damage as you can. As you can see here, there goes the hyenas onto him. Uh, I think, you know, I, I'm, I know we're going to be able to kill him now because he's so low. So I just try and kite the hyenas up the, the ramp to give my rogue some space. Um, Dagger Rogue, like I said, is just really hard without having all those those uh, cool combat uh, swords rogue cooldowns. So uh, that's one thing I will say. So we kill him here. Hyenas come and we end up dying. And I just cut the footage back to when we ran back and looted. So ideally, the run will take you between 8 to 12 minutes, roughly 10 minutes on average, I would say. And uh, 
it's really, really, really solid gold per hour. As you'll see here, I'll vendor everything here in a minute and we make 20 gold and that's without selling mana potions. Um, I personally would say keep them. I think on average you will use one each run and then you get three to five in the chest. So you're banking between two to four mana potions every run and this is great for you as a healer. Uh, the advanced armor smithing sold on the first day for uh, 50 gold on the auction house. However, I think now they're going for maybe 10 to 20 gold depending on your server. So that's another bit of gold that you can make as well. Uh, but yeah, on average, I'd say 20 gold per run is about normal. You're splitting that with the rogue. So you're making 10 gold uh, per run, which takes 10 minutes. You do five in an hour to, before you get locked out. That's 50 gold an hour. Uh, and you still have time left over. It's going to take you roughly 50 minutes to do five runs, and then you can go, uh, you know, waste some time doing doing something else, or you can always pop over and do a jump run. Now, my suggestion would be that you do five tribute runs, which is going to take you roughly uh, 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, if you're any faster than that, make sure you do two of these jump runs. However, uh, normally, on average, people are going to take about 10 minutes per run. So your last uh, tribute run, go ahead and run out of the dungeon, uh, go into the east side of Dire Mall and do a jump run and look for those class books that are sometimes on the ground. Uh, and then this will make you an extra 10, 15 gold an hour, plus it avoids, you avoid getting locked out. Now, the great thing about these runs is they speed up after the first because of the tribute buffs themselves. These will help you out greatly. And just in general, guys, this gold per hour is insane. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, we'll talk about some other Dire Mall stuff later on in the week. Thank you guys for rooting for me in the tournament. I will discuss the tournament once it wraps up uh, also in a future video. Um, thanks, guys, to everyone who's out there supporting me. Really appreciate it. I uh, couldn't be here uh, in the space that I'm at without you guys so really grateful for you guys uh, viewing my videos and encouraging me every day so I will catch you guys in the next video take care